let's talk about black garlic. So black garlic's really cool, actually. It's super crazy good healthy for you. Um, what you'd want to do is actually want to get some garlic and ferment it. And the way you have to ferment black garlic is you have to put it into some kind of thing and keep it at a very consistent temperature, I think maybe 125 or 130 degrees Fahrenheit, for several weeks, like, like three to six weeks, long time. Anyway, so a long time ago, maybe two or three years ago, I made black garlic. It was pretty cool. So I designed this, uh, this chamber, this black garlic making, fermenting chamber thing. Uh, this is it. So my, my student uh, uh, helped me build this. His name is Tim. So hey, Tim. Hey, heads up to Tim, dude. Uh, props to you, brother. So anyway, what we did was we designed this. It was really complicated. This is Styrofoam SM. And uh, we put it together with duct tape. So it's like not duct tape. It's like real duct tape, like stuff they use for ducts. So anyway, that's together, and it's actually amazingly insulated. It's actually quite remarkable how insulated this is. I actually have used it for many things over the years, but one of the things that it was, I filled this with dry ice once, and it kept the dry ice dry for several days, which was actually quite impressive. But the thing that was really quite remarkable was that when you put your hand on the side here, even though it was full of dry ice, and this is like insulated really well, it was still really cold. So anyway, with all that said and done, let's get into like the control system and stuff like that for this black garlic. So specifically, I'm making this video for my friend Eric. How you doing, Eric? Hope, hope you're good, dude. So I'm doing this um, because he wants to make black garlic because he's a farmer. Yeah, he's got a lot of garlic to make, a black garlic to make because he has a lot of garlic because he's a farmer and he grows garlic. So what I did was I think I put like four or five pieces into here and I fermented them and they ended up really good. Um, so, uh, Eric, what I suggest to you, I know that, Eric, what you've got is you've got a, a like a small freezer, and you're going to use that. So I'm just concerned that this particular thing, which is actually the heating element in here, that's actually going to be in your garlic chamber, is maybe not going to be able to heat this thing up, to heat your chamber up, which is going to be a, a little freezer. This thing's about maybe 20 or 30 watts, maybe not even, maybe it's 24 watts or so. Um, I don't think it's going to be able to heat your container consistently. So let me tell you about this. So what I did was, when I had the garlic making machine before, I have to be careful with this. My tech guy, Keenan, props to Keenan. Good job, dude. Still works good. So um, this guy, uh, Keenan made this circuit. It's a control circuit, and it's got a thermocouple. Yeah, wait a second. See this here, them little, little guy there? <laughs> yeah, that's a thermocouple. It's really cool. So I won't get into the, how this works, but it is actually really cool how, how it actually works. So this thing goes in this chamber, and when I originally built this, I needed a heater. So what I actually did was I grabbed a couple of taillights from a 1972 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. And they produce a lot of heat. So we wired those up, and this circuit was turning them on and off as the heater that was in here. The thermocoupling was monitoring the temperature and controlling the system. So I didn't actually want it, when I'm kind of rebuilding this for my friend Eric, right? So I didn't want to use the lights. I wanted to actually use something that's a little bit more better. And this is, I think, a little bit better. So this was actually a brace heater. So I made this for a client that had these leg braces. And um, this actually would go inside the, the, the brace itself and keep their leg warm. So their, their actual brace was cold. So anyway, but they never actually purchased this from me. So it's been sitting in a drawer for years. So what I'm doing is I'm using this as the heater in here. It draws about two amps, a little bit under two amps. And it runs on 12 volts. Uh, at least this does. So anyway, this is my power supply box. And you know where that is, right? You recognize that? That's from a computer. These are really great. They'll give you like up to 10 amps. And um, what I'm using this, why I'm using this is because I need at least maybe two amps to run this thing. And if you, if you use a regular power adapter, a 12 amp power adapter, you might get one that's 500 or up to an amp possibly. But to find one that gives you as much current as two amps is very difficult. So um, that's why I'm using this. And these are diamond dozens. You can get them rip an old computer apart. I think that looks pretty new. I probably bought that. But anyway, so here we go. Oh, there's my Teflon. We will ignore that. Pretend it's not happening. Um, so what I did was I stuck the heater in here. And to test it, I, actually, that's my door. Let me just open the, open the door. Here we go. This is what happens when I open my door. Yeah, come on in. And a delivery. I don't know. That's what happens when my phone rings when someone's coming. So, our ladder is telemarketing. So, here we go. So, this goes in here. That, right. So, what I did was I plugged this thing in. And I put this probe in here. You, you recognize that, right? That's an oven temperature gauge for, like, your turkey or whatever. So, I put this thing in here. And I put the top on. 
Turn the system on, press play. Oh, it didn't have the a circuit in there. I'm not actually, the circuit's not meant to stay in here. But anyway, there you go, put the circuit outside. So I press play, turn it on, and it kept this box at a very stable 127 degrees Fahrenheit. I had it on for like maybe five or six hours or longer, and I took readings every half an hour. It was exactly 127 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's very accurate, the control is very accurate. So it works. So Eric, what I suggest you do is try out your freezer. So you're gonna try that freezer out. And um, what you want to do is you want to put this the heater in there, the thermocouple in there, and you need to simulate the garlic, the mass of the garlic. So maybe throw a couple firewood logs in there or something, just to simulate some mass, uh, equivalent to the amount of garlic you want to put in there. Turn on, press play. I'm going to give you this so that you can test actually the actual temperature. So I would run it for maybe 12, 18 hours, or 10 or 12 hours, I think you're good. Put that in there, and if it actually keeps it at a consistent temperature, so I would imagine it should go up to 127 as well, because that's kind of what this controller is set to, that controller. So if it keeps it at 127 consistently, then you're good. You can use that freezer as a chamber. If not, I suggest you build something else that's well insulated, and it's going to have to be a little bit smaller, big enough that you can fit whatever amount of garlic in it that you want to format, and small enough that this little 20, 24 watt heater can actually pull it off. So I think that's about it. Thanks, dude. See ya.